Concentrate your primary fire on the target, Commander. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think you should be able to make light work of him. This is difficult. <laughs> Hey everyone, Kaz here and the last thing I wanted to try was flight and space simulators before I share my final thoughts on the YAL VR and today is the day. So in today's video I will show some elite dangerous gameplay, we'll cover my final thoughts on the hardware and software setup experience, we'll talk about performance, comfort, build quality and in the end my conclusion that should answer the big question, do I think the YAL VR motion simulator is worth it? If you like to see more videos about VR then consider subscribing and now join me beyond reality. If you've been around this channel then you probably already know about this chair and I thank you for your immense support by watching all our videos. But for those new here, let me quickly summarize and give you some extra info. The YAL VR Motion Simulator came to life from a successful Kickstarter that concluded in 2018. What makes the simulator different when compared to its competitors are the following things. A compact form factor, yes this means it can fit home use. I mean we live in a small condo and even us found some room for it. A high dynamic range, meaning the chair has a wide range of rotation. It can rotate unlimitedly in 360 degrees on the yaw axis. Roll goes up to 70 degrees and pitch goes up to 70 degrees too, but is split in two which you can configure separately. So 35 degrees forward and 35 degrees backwards. The chair can do these movements in sync with the game that you're playing to make it feel more realistic. And lastly, a relatively reasonable price for what it can do. Emphasis on relatively, as I'm not saying it's cheap, but compared to similar motion simulators, this price is reasonable. You can now order the simulator directly from their website. There are two versions of the YAW VR, the standards for 1500 US dollars and the Pro Edition for 2000 US dollars. This is the price before taxes and shipping, which can add a couple of hundred dollars extra depending on where you live. The main difference between the two is the head and back rest. More power for the motors, LED lights at the bottom and a stronger structure. An important spec to note is that the YAW simulator has a recommended maximum weight, which is 265 pounds. The maximum recommended height is 6.4 feet. If you plan on using it, don't forget to add the weight for the accessories you might want to mount on it too, like wheels or flight sticks. Plus, you might need additional counterweight if your accessories are heavy. By the way, for this review, I used the Pro Edition. Moving on to my setup experience, hardware first. The simulator comes mostly assembled in the box. The bottom part contains most of its core like the motors and the omni wheels and on top of it you place the shell. You only have to mount the footrest and plates yourself. Where you place these depends on what you want to do with it. If you got the Pro Edition, you would need to mount the back and headrest too. This hardware setup wasn't hard as YAL VR provides a useful video guide on it. I think it took me around an hour in total and the only problem I had was a bent part due to uh, transport damage and some screw holes didn't quite fit but I made it work. If you want to see this process in uh, more detail then check out my first impressions video on the YAL simulator, the link is below in the description. One thing to add to the hardware setup is that if you want to fully make use of the simulator in VR, like if you want to use the yaw rotation in full 360 degrees, then you will need to find a solution for your VR cables. I'm using this lamp from IKEA, pulleys and cable extenders to handle the wires. I made a video on this too, which I also linked in the description. You can also use the Vive wireless adapter to be wireless or use the Oculus Quest and virtual desktop for example, then all you need to handle are the cables from your accessories. Now the setup experience for the software is a different story. This is something that will take time to learn, especially if you're new to motion simulators. YAL VR provides a config app that you use to connect to the simulator via a Wi-Fi connection, Bluetooth or with a network cable. You also use the app to calibrate the simulator to set the power and movement limits. Calibration has to be done every time you want to use the device, luckily the app is easy to use and understand. The problem for newcomers might be that YAL doesn't provide clear instructions on how to set the software settings at first. By running the simulator on too high 
high power, for example, you might actually hurt yourself or the simulator. Your VR could quickly solve this with a good guide, but I do think they are working on it. For games, your VR provides the game engine, which you can use to connect the Yacht simulator with supported games. Right now, these are the supported games. A lot of popular racing, flight and space games are on here. Each game could require an additional step to do, which is explained in the game engine app per game. If you are new, it might be a little overwhelming and often you will need some technical knowledge to know how to connect and configure the games. Games that are not supported through YAL's game engine can most likely be connected using third-party software called SimTools. SimTools is a generic tool for multiple motion simulators. You will need to pay for SimTools though, and then pay another license to download plugins. But in return, you can connect way more games to your YAW simulator as there is a big community building plugins for sim tools. Before we dive into Elite's dangerous gameplay, there is one thing I haven't covered yet in previous videos. In most VR games, the tracking can get confused as the simulator will be rotating but your headset stays in place. This can cause your position in game to become off. To accommodate for this, you will need to configure motion compensation. Right now, your VR has a solution with a free tool called OpenVR Input Emulator, where you have to attach a controller to the chair. Currently, they are working on a solution that's integrated into your game engine software, but at the time of making this video, it's not available yet. Motion compensation works fine though, and it's easy to use with the OpenVR Input Emulator, which I will show you briefly in my gameplay. However, for some reason, your VR doesn't mention any of this in the manuals. I had to ask them for it. But let's dive into some elite dangerous gameplay in the Yaw Motion Simulator to show you what that's like. Okay, so I already have the Yaw VR game engine on. I'm just using uh, almost the preset settings that was set by Yaw VR themselves. And I already started a plug-in here. The only thing I've changed is that I changed the Yaw pitch and roll inverse because that felt better to me. In this game, we also are going to need something else, which is the motion compensator and I think it should be this controller and you can easily turn that on by going to here motion compensation and then apply then it should work uh, now let me go back to the game and put the controller here and start this device uh, I, I need to start it with my mobile phone because the game is in full screen okay it turned me around, that's fine. Okay, and now I'm going to put this a little bit close to me and here we go. <laughs> I am currently in the tutorial because uh, I don't have a lot of time in Elite Dangerous yet and I know it has a pretty steep learning curve. So uh, I'm just going to show you what it's like in the tutorial. And I also got the uh, Trustmaster T-Flight Hotas X, as you can see here. So let's try this out. Ooh, okay, here we go. It's vibrating. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. Let's try that. Okay, I have to go over here. Uh, let's find it. Targets. Oh, I, guess now might be a good time to I need to turn all the way back. Up. As you can see, I don't have a limit on my yaw. You, know, you can put a limit if you ha don't have like cable management and stuff. I still don't know if my cable management is good enough, but um, we'll see. We'll see. I might put a limit on the, on the yaw later on. Okay, I have to go over here. Oh. I do have a limitation on uh, the pitch, by the way. Because I feel like if I put it too high, it's like crazy movements. And it's not as realistic. Because I don't move like crazy in uh, the spaceship. I think I have it on like 10 degrees or something. Objective completed already. Okay, let's slow down because I'm going to crash. Or shall we try what that's like? <laughs> okay, training simulation. Let's see what combat is like. Oh. There he is. Right on time. Don't get too excited though. Before you engage, you need to make sure he still has a bounty on his head. Target his ship to scan him. Okay, okay let's uh, target it. Ah, uh, here we go. Right, Wanted. he's definitely your mark. Time to deploy your hard points, Commander. 
Weapons hot. Concentrate your primary fire on the target, Commander. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> your little friend here has a combat rank of harmless. Seems to have left the hangar without any shields. Think you should be able to make light work of him. This is difficult. <laughs> Finally, nice work, Commander. You're that was a lot of work. Man, I really enjoy playing Early Dangerous with this simulator. Once you know how, it's easy to get started too. Plus, I didn't need any modifications like counterweights. The movements felt good to almost one on one, and I love how I'm rotating 360 degrees just like I'm doing in game. It seems like space games and flight sims with the yaw simulator is a much better experience. Of course, I have no idea what it feels like to be in a spaceship, even though that would be a dream. So I can't say if it feels realistic, but it's immersive to me and it makes me want to play the game every day in the YAL sim. If you have watched my previous video, you know I got the Logitech G920 wheels for racing. And I found both game genres a lot of fun. But the simulator doesn't seem like it's built for racing, as the wheels and pedals could be too heavy for the simulator, giving balancing issues. I was able to solve it though by adding some counterweight in the shell with me. For more info and tips on this, check out my previous video. Other games are fun too. The most surprising one is the Oculus Quest game Epic Roller Coasters, which works with only a Bluetooth connection. This is so much fun as you are completely wireless and the movements feel super realistic. However, I don't see myself jumping into roller coaster games like these every day. I mean, it's fun to show friends, but not every day for myself. If you want to use the YAL sim professionally though, like in our case, then this is cool. As for performance, I usually connect the simulator on a Wi-Fi connection and I feel it responds fast enough to all movements to make it feel realistic. The movements are also powerful. I usually set the power between 30 to 55% depending on the game as anything higher is way too intense and scares the poop out of me sometimes. I also limit the angles and I almost never put it to its maximum degree, so I'm sure there's settings for everybody. As for comfort, the chair itself is surprisingly comfortable for my butt. Inside the shell you get cushions and a leather-like soft material, both look and feel nice. I mostly reviewed the Pro Edition with the back and headrest, and I can spend a couple of hours in there without comfort issues. If you get the Standard Edition, you only get this cushion with it, it works and it isn't bad, but I can imagine this might not be comfortable for your neck after a while. Comfort in VR also means we need to talk about motion sickness too unfortunately. And while for racing it felt like it helped, I didn't feel like it helped me with uh, Elite Dangerous. But whether you will feel sick will highly depend on the game itself and what comfort options you choose just like normal VR gaming. With the YAL VR it's extra important to use the right settings before playing because one bad rotation and I can feel sick very quickly. If you are prone to motion sickness, the YAL VR is not going to magically remove that for you, unfortunately. And I always have to note here that comfort is personal, so whatever works for me may not work for you. Now, as for build quality, it's mostly plastic with some metal parts here and there. I don't think it will be easy to break the device as the parts that may hit something are the metal parts. It's probably easier to break your furniture with the simulator than the other way around. What does worry me is the overheating issue I talked about before. I've seen several cases online where the motors overheated and burned through the plastic on the shell. However, it is unconfirmed if this is an issue due to people modifying the YAL simulator with too much weight or if it's a production issue. Nonetheless, I do think there should be a mechanic in place to stop this, especially at this price point. 
Thankfully, this has not happened to me and neither for many others who weigh more than me. I did hear that Yaw VR is replacing parts if it does happen to you and that they are working on a cooling solution, although this has not been confirmed yet. But yes, this also does not give it extra points for build quality. So yes, the Yaw simulator isn't perfect. You need patience to learn to use it, but once you know how, it isn't hard to get started. I do think the Yaw VR motion simulator is cleverly designed and amazingly fun when it works. I mean, in the past you were only able to experience these kinds of motion simulators at an arcade, but now you can do it at home. However, it's only suitable for a couple of game genres. Racing is possible, but I don't think it's ideal as you will need to take care of the balancing issues, and then it still has some trouble. So I think the YAM simulator is more suitable for flight and space games as you don't need to do any modifications. But is it worth it? to pay this amount of money just for that? For the typical VR consumer, I don't think so. It's only worth it if you're going to spend a lot of time in flight or space games. Like if you want to play Elite Dangerous every day for more than a year, then yes, I do think it's fun. And I do think it adds to the immersion. Then between the Pro Edition and the Standard Edition, the biggest differences are the strongest structure, backrest and extra power. I don't have the Standard Edition, so I can't compare the structure, but I don't think you need the extra power as I never put the power higher than 55%. I would only get the Pro Edition for the backrest, but I don't think that's worth $500 more. So if your budget is tight, I'd probably go for the Standard Edition and find a nice pillow to use as a backrest instead. But that still leaves one issue that I think needs to be solved from the YAW VR site, which is the overheating problem. In the end, it will be up to you to decide if it's worth it for you and if it's worth the risk. So I hope this video helped you out and that you can make a more informed decision now. Let me know if you're going to get the YAW Motion Simulator or if you already got one, what are your thoughts? Feel free to drop any remaining questions that you may have below to and well. Thank you so much for watching once again. I really wish I could give you all a big hug for your immense support by watching these videos. A special thanks goes to our champions, Patreon members and YouTube sponsors. And as always, VR on.